Welcome to our first Algebra 1 video. I wanted to put together a short video that helped you review for your first quiz for sections 1.1 through 1.3. In section 1.1, if you remember, we talked about variables in algebra, and the very first thing we talked about was having a variable expression. So if, if we have a variable expression, remember those got to have three main components. Number one, it's got to have a variable. And remember, variables, any letter that represents a number, so x, y, t, m, those are all variables. You can pick any letter of the alphabet. Two, it's got to have an operation. And operation, your simple addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. And then lastly, number three, it's got to have a constant. And remember, a constant is just a fancy term for a number. 3, negative 2, 6, 10, so on. Picking any number would help with that. So quick uh, examples of a variable expression. 3 plus x. 3 is your constant addition for your operation, and your variable is x. Something like uh, 4 t is also a variable expression. You have your constant 4, you have your uh, variable t, and your multiplication is going on there for your example as well. So there's a quick review there of a variable expression. And then we also talked about actually how we are able to um, evaluate variable expressions. So if I gave you something like uh, x plus y, when x equals 2 and y is equal to 4, all you have to do is make sure you know what you're plugging into. x is 2 and y is 4, so this is really just asking you what is 2 plus 4, and you can evaluate that as 6. Now, we got a little bit fancier, and I showed you, showed you function notation uh, where we got a little bit more advanced, but the same process, f of x is 2x plus 6, and I ask you to evaluate f of 3. Well, all you have to do is actually take the 3 and plug it in for x. So f of 3 is 2 times 3 plus 6. And then 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 6 is equal to 12. So that's another way of doing a variable expression. But we actually showed it with a little more uh, upper level terms here with the pre-calculus notation here for functions. Now, one of the bonus problems is actually going to be a what we call a piecewise function. And it looks real complicated, but it's really not. If I give you something like f of x is equal to, and then you're going to see these little fancy brackets here, it's going to be x plus 3, and then we put a rule next to it. It's only x plus 3 if the x's are bigger than 0. And then I'll put another rule here. Maybe it's 2x minus 1 if x is less than or equal to 0. So you have actually two different rules. If numbers are bigger than 0, you use this rule. If numbers are less than or equal to 0, you use this rule. So if I ask you for f of 2, you look at the rules. Is 2 bigger than 0? Yes, it is. Then you plug it into the top here, and you'll wind up with 2 plus 3 getting 5. Another example, let's say I ask you for f of negative 1. Is negative 1 bigger than 0? No, it's not, so we're not going to use this rule. Is negative 1 less than or equal to 0? Yes, it is. So we'll actually plug it into the bottom rule there. So we'll have 2 times negative 1 minus 1, which gives me negative 2 minus 1, and we'll have negative 3 for an answer. So that's a quick review and a little bit of a bonus preview uh, from section 1.1 on how we are going to uh, evaluate expressions. So then quickly, if we go over to section 1.2, we talked about solving equations with either addition or subtraction. And those were all just one-step equations. So if I had something like, oh, let's see, x minus 5 is equal to 3. 
and we want to solve for x right here. We want to figure out what the value of x is. Now, we can obviously in our head figure out what number minus 5 is equal to 3. And we know that's going to be 8. But the work shown, we want to talk about the inverse operations. So to get x by itself, remember the whole balancing of a scale thing. We're going to add 5 because that's the inverse operation of subtraction. So the opposite of subtracting 5 is adding 5. And then we'll add 5 to both sides come across here, we'll draw our line, we know that the negative 5 and the positive 5 cancel out, and we'll wind up with x equals 8. Another quick example, let's say the variables on the other side, something like uh, 6 is equal to, oh, I don't know, x plus 7. Well, what's happening to x here? We have 7 that's being added to it, so we're trying to solve for x right here. The inverse operation of adding 7 is subtracting 7. So we're going to subtract 7 from both sides. Cancel the 7s. We're left with x. And then 6 minus 7 is going to give me a negative 1 for our answer there. Um, variables on each side. Again, just finding the inverse operation will help you solve for that. Uh, we'll do one more. Let's see. We have uh, something like 10 equals, oh, let's go with uh, y minus 8. Well, quickly again, we got y is what we're solving for, and it's not a big deal that it's not x. We could pick any variable that we want. Uh, but what's happening to y? We're subtracting 8 from that. So now what we want to do is add 8 to both sides. Again, what you do to one side, you got to do to the other side. The 8 and negative 8 is going to cancel, and we got y is equal to 10 plus 8 gives me 18. So that was out of section 1.2 where we solved one step equations by either adding or subtracting to both sides. And then the last section here out of 1.3, see if we can uh, come up on our heading here, solving equations by either multiplying or dividing. So again, there's then we have one step here. Again, we're just going to do the inverse operation. We're either going to multiply or divide uh, for solving an equation. So if I look at this first one here, we've got negative 4 equals k divided by negative 5. All right, well, we're trying to solve for k. Well, what's happening to k? We're dividing by negative 5. Well, the inverse operation of dividing by negative 5 would be to multiply both sides by negative 5. So if I multiply both sides by negative 5, this 5 and this 5 will cancel out because we'll wind up with a fraction of the same thing over the same thing, which is 1. And we're left with k equaling, and then over here, negative 5 times negative 4, that's positive 20. So k is equal to 20 for our problem there. If we take a look at another one very similar, how about like negative 13 equals y divided by 3. Well, again, what's happening to y? We're dividing by 3. So now, I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. So this 3 and this 3 will cancel. And y is equal to 3 times negative 13 is going to wind up being negative 39. So there's two examples there where you have to multiply both sides of the equation uh, to get your answer. Now, a different type be something where we have to divide on both sides. So let's take a look here at another example where I've got 7x is equal to 56. Again, we're trying to solve for x right here. So where what's happening to x? It's being multiplied by 7. So the inverse operation is to divide by 7. And right here now, 7 divided by 7, that's 1. And we're left with x. And we see that 56 divided by 7 gives us 8. Uh, another one we can try here real quick is something like uh, 75 is equal to 15t. Well, what's happening to t? t is getting multiplied by 15. So we're going to divide by 15. That's the inverse operation for that. So 15 divided by 15, that's going to cancel out, and we're left with t. And then 75 divided by 15, we should know that's 5. So there's 
two examples right there where we had to multiply both sides, and then two examples here where we had to divide by both sides. And then if you remember from our notes, there were a few more problems where we had to deal with some fractions here. Uh, so we had some equations uh, with fractions, and we actually went about that because we talked about what a reciprocal was. And a reciprocal was where it's mainly where you flip the fraction. So if I had 3 fourths, the reciprocal to that fraction is 4 thirds. And we needed to know that because that's the technique we're going to use to help solve these equations. Uh, for example, if I've got 5 ninths x equals 35. One of the ways we can get rid of this fraction is we actually multiply both sides by its reciprocal. So the reciprocal for 5 ninths is actually 9 fifths. So again, what you do to one side, you do to the other side. The 9 fifths and the 5 ninths actually cancel out, and we're left with 1x, and then 35 times 9 fifths will actually wind up getting 63 for that. Let's try one more here. Uh, let's say I have something like, uh, oh, 1 sixth W is equal to 102. Well, right here, again, W is being multiplied by this fraction, 1 sixth. Well, the reciprocal for 1 sixth is 6 over 1. 6 over 1 times 1 6 is going to cancel out. We're left with W. And then we wind up with 102 times 6 over 1, which is essentially just 6. So 102 times 6 winds up being 612. So there's a great video you guys can look back on for your first quiz in uh, Algebra 1 covering section 1, 1 through 1, 3. We talked about variables in algebra and then solving one-step equations by either addition, subtraction, multiplication or division or multiplying by the reciprocal.